Hey there, everybody. Welcome. This is our review of The Blacklist Season 8, Episode 10. We are diving into the world of Dr. Perilous and what is a weird... I don't know why I'm talking like this. This, this episode was just... It was strange. Like, that's the best way to describe it. Strange. It was strange. And I mean, it moved the story a little bit, but very small. Yeah, it was a big Dembe episode. We had, like, some incremental movement. I'm disappointed in some ways that certain things weren't fleshed out more. But I think the lasting image in all of this is going to be watching a grown man in Neville Townsend beat up poor Rudiger, who was basically just a human punching bag at the end of this. Poor Rudiger, he completely betrayed Rudiger. Okay. We've got a lot to get into here, but before we do, if you guys enjoy this video, subscribe to the channel. We have, of course, all sorts of Blacklist stuff coverage and all that good stuff. And also, check out our Instagram. It's at Matt and Jess TV. We've got a lot of fun things that we've been doing over there, kind of separate from all we've got going on in the YouTube world. Yeah. I found out that they have Funkos for the game Clue, which is like my one of my favorite movies, my favorite board games. I love mystery, anything. So I've been collecting those now and they're all over Instagram. They're really cute. Do you think Liz did it in the conservatory with the candlestick? Somebody gave me a great idea that I should take these little Funkos and put them in rooms all over our house so that if we go into the kitchen, that Colonel Mustard is in there with the okay. revolver. Okay, all right. I need Professor Plum watching me in, like, various rooms of this place. But, okay, the this is the thing with this episode is that the end of it, I think it was almost just like, let's show how crazy Townsend is. So like, that's the real writing push here, that we're going to have yeah. human punching bag Rudiger, weird boxing practice. One week ago, it seemed like Townsend couldn't even get out of bed, and now he's like, <laughs> like doing all this stuff. Yeah, I think that this episode really did push Townsend a bit more in a way that we can see sort of a how unhinged he is. We don't really know a lot about him and what he's really after. Because originally I thought he was more after Katarina to just have her killed. That that was, you know, let's get rid of her. She's N13. She got to go. And now he's looking for answers about the archive, which is something that I really didn't know what he's after. And I still don't really know exactly what he's after. Here's who Neville Townsend is. I think I've just solved it in my head here. Oh, he is, all right. he's the guy who thought he got abducted by aliens okay. like 20 years ago. <laughs> and he is now like revisiting that place every night with like a whole outfit with like tin foil and all this. Like he is death, like he is so desperate to try to figure out what happened so many years ago that his version of the tin foil outfit and all of this is like, I'm going to get this interrogator. Tell me about the archive. The archive's responsible. Katarina, no, Red, and this is why I think he's so unhinged and willing to listen to Liz. This guy is just losing it because he can't have what he wants, and so he's just all over the place. He really is all over the place, and it's kind of fun to have somebody that is this unpredictable and we don't really know what he's going to do next or what his motivation is. And that way he sort of reminds me a little bit of the Joker. He, he is sort of like the blacklist Joker. He is just so, he, he is obviously very, very dangerous. Like he's willing to beat the snot out of Rudiger and then be like, welcome to the family. It's like, <laughs> That's not something you say to your do to your family there in Evil Townsend. You don't beat him up in the face and then be like, you're only alive because of Liz. Yeah, that was actually a really interesting reveal, right? Because we know that Rudiger and, and Reddington have had a relationship a long time. Liz obviously knows this as well. So just that sentence that Liz made sure that his life is spared, why? Is it because she feels something for him because he is part of that network that she was part of for a while with Reddington? Is it because she thinks that he has more information? But mostly the fact that she's able to already influence Townsend to beg and plead to keep this guy alive and Townsend's going to listen to her, 
this relationship between Liz and Townsend has moved along at lightning speed off screen. This is the thing. I, I think they're very desperate to sort of say, okay, listen, you know, Liz may have tried to almost have an airline collision that would have killed all sorts of people and all that. Let's just, she still, she still has some humanity, guys. Look, she's not having Rudiger killed. It's like that. No, it, he's just being put inside a punching bag and punched <laughs> to within an inch of his life. That's yeah. okay, but not death. Liz's code is a very interesting code. Let's just, let's just put it that way. But is this where I have to take the massive L now? Because I've been saying for like two weeks that I thought that this episode was going to be the one that ended with Liz turning back up because we were going to have a hiatus. Yep, let's let's take your L. I was wrong. <laughs> I thought they were going to give us something to conclude this. It just, it made so much sense in my head. It was just like, how long are they going to keep Liz away from us? I mean, we've already done a video all about what's going on with the Megan Boone situation. You can check that out in the description, but... I thought this was going to be our glimmer of it's all okay, guys. The story's coming back together. No, instead we just end with Rudiger getting punched a bunch of times while Townsend yells at him. Yeah, I mean, there was very little even about Liz. While Reddington was being, you know, interrogated here, there was a moment that he turned to the camera feeling like Liz was watching this and tried to talk to her through this. Yeah, and, I, and I'm sure she probably had some sort of connection to what was going on, and maybe Reddington knew that, but I think I don't think he would have said anything about the archive regardless, because he knows how badly, apparently, apparently Townsend wants Katarina dead, or at least he did, he wants N13 vanquished, he wants the archive, it does sort of go back to what you're saying, like, it, was he thinking with Katarina, oh, I, I want her dead, but in her dying breath, she's going to tell me about the archive? I don't understand the order of things with this man. Yeah, and I think he doesn't realize that Reddington is extremely good at keeping secrets, and I think that he will die for his secrets. It would be, he feels that whatever this secret is, or secrets about the archive, it's yeah. worse to tell somebody he is willing to let himself go for the cause. If that has to be the way, then that is how it has to be. So, I mean, bringing him in was just a mistake. He did claim once again that, you know, Katarina really was the person responsible. And that is the person <laughs> that Neville should have wanted dead all along and not to buy into Liz. And this is... I believe Red, and I'm not just saying that because we're all like Red sycophants after watching The Blacklist for so many years, but Reddington does a lot of unsavory things. I think we can all agree on this. Yeah, because one of the things that Reddington was saying is that Katarina was responsible for Townsend's family being killed and that it's not Reddington, but like Townsend hasn't really asked anything <laughs> about that, which is also very weird. It's very much, I feel like, a dance with words because Reddington doesn't tell many bold-faced lies, but sort of saying Katarina is responsible <laughs> for this. He's not denying responsibility as N13 and saying that or whatever N13 really actually is. He's just sort of playing a little bit of smoke and mirrors because nobody loves deflecting like Reddington onto something else that's kind of true. Yeah. This episode okay we, we're, we're eight minutes in now so i think we have to have the laverne cox conversation mm -hmm. she was so good right? and creepy <laughs> and weird as parallels like this i i never want to see any of these torture methods used ever again on anything else I'm, I'm good no and i like that she her last name was like parallels and it was close to paralyze and yeah. that was stuff that she used and i it was very creepy. And I mean, Laverne Cox is just so good. I loved her on Orange is New Black. I loved her here. I mean, she was she was so good. It's a reminder. I always think of the Blacklist as sort of kind of comic book adjacent. Been like you said, I never even thought about the Perilous Paralyzed thing until just now when you said it. And it's like, oh, that's probably what they were doing with this character. But, you know... Yeah, like she actually felt like someone that could have been plucked right out of a comic book. And this show does have that feel to it, even without the... We won't talk too much about the animation episode, <laughs> but it has that feel to it. And she was great. Yeah, she, she was great. I mean, she 
Okay, I don't know if we can really say that she was great at her job because she didn't actually get anything that she set out to get. But I think that it's who she had because I think that, again, this was the mistake that they ran into is that Reddington is willing to die for these secrets. That's my yeah. feeling. I feel that he was never going to give it up and that if he died, that that would be fine. Yeah, he's he wasn't going to give it up. He wasn't going to say anything. Dembe is the same exact way. And the most important thing for Dembe in this episode, I think, is that conversation he has with the doctor about <laughs> does Reddington see your pain? Does he understand your pain? And based on the conversation he had with Red later, you know, Dembe lied to her and said, oh, he sees everything. And then he sort of denies it later and just says, you know, no, you maybe you don't see everything to Red. Yeah, I mean, that was a really tough conversation to watch because I think that Reddington wants to see everything about Dembe. Dembe is someone yeah. that he loves tremendously, and I think he wants to be able to have that connection at very least with him, if not with other people. And we've seen a lot of that this season of Reddington trying to find ways to connect on a deeper level with people that he's been having a hard time with. And I think what Reddington, like Reddington is very jaded. And I, and I think this episode is another reminder of all this. And it's not to say that Dembe is not jaded, but he's got a slightly different code. I mean, we saw this when Dembe temporarily left Reddington. And I think he's got his very own perspective. You know, he's a black Muslim. He mm -hmm. has a very different, you know, presumably he had a very different upbringing. He has other people he's looking after. We don't really see very much of Dembe's family on this show anymore at all, but I think it's a recognition on his part of, you know what, I have my things, I have my life, I have things I care about, and I'm sure Reddington probably does ask these questions off camera, but we never ask, see Reddington be like, so Dembe, how, how is your day? How are you doing? You know, how, how are the people that are close to you? Like, these conversations never happen. It was still good to see that Reddington was very quick to give up his own life for Dembe's. And while he may not see all of Dembe's pain, yeah. he can work on that now. There's always time to change and learn and grow with the people that you love. It's true. And I think maybe that will be something that helps to continue this bond. Because one of the things I did like about this episode at... You know, that does seem at times that there wasn't enough happening or it wasn't going anywhere fast enough. But we don't get to see many scenes with Cooper and Dembe, just like the two of them together. Like, I can't even tell you how many scenes there have been of those two together. No, and there's a little bit that was sort of starting to feel like they were setting up an idea for something, whether it's on this show, a spinoff, something where... They bring in Dembe working as a cop or working uh, on the task force or something. And they're just sort of showing him that there there can be a different type of life. Not one that Dembe's looking to have and doesn't seem to really want. But it was nice to sort of have that acknowledgement from Cooper to be like, hey, you're really good at this. And then it also sort of brings back that idea of the task force in general and how compromised everyone yeah. is and that they really either need to focus on Park as the new person that's in there that is not as involved with Liz as everyone yeah. else is. Or they need to bring in somebody brand new <laughs> yeah. to that is not involved with Liz at all because... Wrestler's way too compromised. He's so compromised. Yeah. It's like he just can't think straight. Aram really loves Liz. He is so compromised that he let that serenoid go and it wasn't even Liz. And <laughs> yeah. I feel that the two of them and Cooper to a degree as well. He only put out this arrest warrant last week. Yeah. And this has been going on for weeks and it has taken him this long to finally get to the point that it's time to bring her in. That plain thing should have been it. She needs to be yeah. brought in. And that that is the end of it. Bring her in. This team needs somebody to come in that is not compromised. And that will not put up with the rest of the team that is. 
it's interesting in a way. Reddington was still not particularly thrilled to hear that there was an arrest warrant out on Liz. He was just sort of like, eh, I don't know. She's trying to kill you, man. Like, I, I understand that there's a bond. There's something there. There's a reason Reddington doesn't want anything to happen to Liz. But, you know, there's going to be a breaking point soon. And he's really just kind of dancing around it and dancing around it. And I don't know when things are going to escalate, but I would assume Liz was off somewhere planning something in this episode. Yeah, I mean, like I said, when he was being interrogated, he was convinced that she was watching because he was saying, listen, Liz, yeah. don't cross this river. Once you cross this, you can't come back from this. I don't want this for you, trying to sort of plead with her that listen to me. We have our connection still. I know what I'm talking about. I'm on this other side of the river. You don't need to be on this other side of the river. It's again, another moment where seeing her would have given us a lot of information. Is she listening to this? Yeah. Is she not listening to this? Is any of it getting to her? Who knows? <laughs> I'm going to throw something out here because we're, you know, we're 16 minutes into this video. This is this is a crazy sort of theory, but I've heard variations of this over the past week or so that maybe what the Blacklist is doing is we've got all of these episodes and while James and some other cast members are filming this, maybe Megan is off filming her own episodes kind of at the same time concurrently and we're going to be seeing, yeah. That's yeah. expensive. It is expensive and I don't know if they would really be willing to go along with all of this, but... One thing that John Bokenkamp and Eisendrath did tell us at the start of this season is mm -hmm. they're playing a lot with the idea of time yep. this season. Maybe, maybe that is happening? Because it's also weird. We didn't see a lot of, we didn't see a lot of wrestler in this episode. Didn't see a lot of Aram. Maybe they're off doing something else. Like you said, this is expensive. This is probably not the case. No, it is really expensive because then you're paying for double locations, double crews, double everything. That is very expensive for them to be able to do something like that. So they there might be something like that, but they're not filming at the same time. And that we may end up getting into a territory where we have a bunch of episodes and we're 17 minutes in. That red oh, is not in. <laughs> the lightning just strikes our video immediately. We all just duck and cover. Oh my goodness, listen, please stay with us. Let's, don't, don't, listen, we don't want this. <laughs> we don't want, we heard everyone's reaction after that Brothers episode last season where it was wrestler and no Reddington. I, I think maybe we'll have an episode <laughs> or two without Red this season just because they're going to want to give us a big Liz one at some point. But I don't think we're going to have a run without Reddington like we've currently had with Liz. No. I would say something drastic here that, like, if this proves to be the case, I will insert blank here. But I don't want to end up having to do that thing, so I'm not making that bold of a statement. I'm just hoping that with as many episodes as she has been gone, yeah. that they are not going to wrap it all up in some sort of one episode <laughs> montage of her, you know, grabbing Chemical Mary here and talking to Rudiker here, or doing whatever Neville here. Like, it needs to be more than one episode, however. Yeah. I would still like to see Reddington involved in some way. So if we just get two Liz episodes where it's enough to explain everything that's going on, that there will be moments that we will still see Reddington. I think it's going to be, it's the episodes with just Reddington are great. I mean, James yeah. Spader is great, but it is missing Liz and it will be the same for me with just Liz missing Reddington. The show is about both of them and their relationship and yeah. the mystery between them. Yeah. You know what they should say when they reunite? Liz has been watching Townsend a lot, so maybe she's going to be like, welcome to the family. Nobody oh should ever say welcome to the family like that ever again. Town there will be a Townsend impression that evolves as we go through the remainder of the season, so be prepared for that. Yeah. Okay, well, what did you guys think about this weird, weird episode? Do you like or hate Townsend more than you did previously? What What is your big takeaway? Let us know, and if you like this video, subscribe for more. Give us a like. You can support us further as well. We have links in the description to our store, to our Patreon. We do Q&As there at the end of every month. We'll see you here next time.